Hi everyone, I'm José Valim, and last week I published a video where I went through some of the bugs and user experiences issues that we could find on ChatGPT UI, and most of those were caused by the latency, the distance between the client and the server. So what I want to do today is to show how easy it is to fix and address these bugs in LiveView, and not only I want to show that LiveView has affordances to help us do that, but a lot of the fundamental problems, they are actually solved out of the box for us, okay? So let's get started. So just a quick recap. So what I have here, okay, is a LiveView application kind of uh, emulating the ChatGPT UI, right? And the UI that I'm emulating is the links UI in ChatGPT. So you can actually create links to any of your ChatGPT conversations. And if you go to settings, you can find a listing of all those links. And then you can go, you can visit the link and you can delete them. And in particular, what was happening uh, in ChatGPT and still does at the time of this recording is that if I deleted an item, well, what we would see is that the item would fade out a little bit, the row would fade out a little bit, but before the row was removed, it would flash back again, right? As if the optimistic state was being lost, right? But perhaps the biggest problem in there, which I did not show in the video, uh, but it's still happening today, is that if you go and you delete three elements really, really fast, uh, they actually start losing their state. So like the link two fades out. And then when you click the third, right, the link two immediately pops back to life, even if it's going to take a while for it to be deleted. And this is a very common example when the client changes some things, the server changes some updates, right? Changes some things and they get out of sync. And this, this difference in the state between the client and the server is not being handled automatically, either by the application or by the framework, okay? So how would we solve those problems with LiveView, all right? So what I have here is the code for this page, and it's mostly markup. We are using Tailwind and a couple functions to, to mount and download the data, okay? So how we would solve this? So the first thing, well, first let's see how it works, right? So if I get here on the page and I delete, right? You can see that everything is happening immediately. And the reason why everything's happening immediately is because this thing is running on my machine. So everything is going to be super fast. So LiveView comes with a latency simulator, which is really good to find this kind of bugs, right? So we can enable the latency simulator here to a second. And now when I click delete, you can see that it takes a while for things to disappear. This actually feels pretty close to the ChatGPT experience, okay? All right, so we now have like a, a simulated latency events happening on the page and we can see that when we click things, uh, it takes a while. So how do we fix this? Well, LiveView has this feature called JS commands and that's how we're going to fix it. So I'm going to say, look, on click for the delete event, I want to push the delete event to the server and, but I also want to do a hide command. I want to send a hide command to the row. And here we pass a selector. So the row is going to have this ID that I'm going to interpolate. And I think this is pretty much it. So I'm going to save the page. Uh, the code is automatically formatted. Live view automatically reloads the page for us. So now when I click delete, it should disappear immediately. And we can see that happening, right? We click it it immediately disappear, right? And um, that works, this feels an improvement, but it feels too abrupt, right? It's like, boom, it's happening immediately, right? So let's add some like transition to this. Let's say, look, within 200 milliseconds, I want to ease out from this uh, class. So I'm using Tailwind classes to this one. So I'm going to save the file, it's going to format, automatically reload. And now when I click this, we can see that now at least there is a blink, there at least some feedback of what is happening, right? So that's it. This is pretty much all we took for us to do some optimistic deletion in the UI, right? And it is working. And before we move forward, we can improve on this, but before I move forward, let's talk a little bit about JS commands, right? So what are JS commands? 
JS commands is how we can compose these operations uh, that LiveView is going to run on the client. And JS commands have two important properties is that they are declarative and they are composable. And the composable is really important because imagine that, look, we try to fine tune this. We try to fine tune this hide event to have the perfect timing and the perfect combi combination of transition classes that you want for our application. So instead of you repeating this particular set of operations in every element that you add, right? We can actually, because this is just Elixir code, I can actually like kind of extract it out to a function. Delete and hide, right? That is going to receive the selector. And then we paste the code here. We pass the selector as argument. Uh, and now we go back to the code and we say, look, when there is a click, I want to do delete and hide, and that's it, right? So we just went and encapsulated all the JS commands into a function that we can now share with other modules if we want. And we can see that everything still works, right? So this is one important uh, point here, that JS commands, they are declarative and composable. So, so far so good, but you can say, well, Jose, I don't like this user experience that you are showing a lot because you delete things immediately and I think it would be more transparent to the user to do something like ChatGPT. Like when I click delete, it fades out. And when the server finally acknowledges it, you remove it from the page. So how do we do that with uh, LiveView? Well, let's, let's do it. So let me remove some of the code that we added. And yeah, so what, what we are going to do here is that instead of doing a push and a hide, we're just going to add a class uh, opacity 50, once again, using Tailwind classes uh, to, the to the element, right? So instead of hiding it, we change its opacity, okay? So again, we refresh, it refreshed the page automatically for us. So when I click it, you can see that opacity was applied, right? And it behaved exactly like in ChatGPT UI. Actually, not quite exactly, right? It fixed the bug because in ChatGPT UI, when you deleted something, before the thing was removed, it flashed again but that's not happening uh, with LiveView. Not only that, if we try to delete three things really quickly, I'll try my best. So, oh, I could not. So if I try to delete things really quickly, you can see that when I click the second one, it doesn't affect the state of the first, right? Everything is happening as we click them and as the events are acknowledged on the server, while ChatGPT in this scenario, when you do things too fast, it starts losing state and things start popping up and flicking in all different ways, right? What else can we do here? So uh, I think we got the base functionality from the links table uh, already working. So let's have some fun, okay? So let's say that uh, when we delete the item, we already make it opaque. But let's say that we wanted to, when it's deleted from the server, we wanted to make it live with a, with a bang, right? So let's do some animation, right? Let's do some transition. So another way of doing transitions, we already saw how we could do transition on hide, but I can also say, look, when the element is removed, we want to do a transition of animate ping. Uh, and let's give it some time so we can see it happening. Half a second should be good enough. So we save, it formats, the page reloads. And now when I delete this, you can see the animation uh, kicking, kicking in, quite funny actually. Uh, yeah, so that's it. We just, again, we added one line of code saying, hey, when LiveView is managing this element and this thing is going to be removed, do this transition in a way that is not going to overlap with other client or server updates, right? It's all managed for us. And something else that I think it's, really important talking about is like when you're doing all those deletions, what is the payload over the wire? Because in ChatGPT, ChatGPT is, is using Remix. And what is happening there is that when you delete an, an element, it's doing two requests to the server. And the second request is returning uh, a lot of the links information that is already on the page. Again, it returns a lot of the link information all over again. Uh, you can paginate it, right? But if you're showing the whole links, as I'm showing here, it's going to, to send everything again. But how does LiveView compare? So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to open up the inspector. I'm going to go to the network. Let's reload the page. And LiveView by default is going to use a WebSocket. So there is a WebSocket connection 
between the client and the server. And let's see the response here. And when I click delete, right, the latency simulator kicks in, so the event is not sent immediately, but that's only because of the latency simulator. And you can see here, this is the event that it's sent to delete something. This is it, right? Let me see if you click raw. This is 100 bytes, right? So we are not sending cookies again we are, that the server would have to, to, to verify, potentially decrypt, right? We are not sending API tokens that the server has to go to the database. We just send the deletion information over the WebSocket connection, which is already authenticated. And that's why it's only 100 bytes. And here's the response, okay? The response is, let me put without the raw. This is it. This is literally live view saying, hey, in this particular place of the page, remove the element, okay? That's all, right? And if we see, the response is 138 bytes, right? Compare that with sending the whole list of links over again. And then if you don't want to send the whole list of links, you have to paginate and figure those things out, right? Again, LiveView is automatically computing those minimal payloads for us and actually wrote uh, really long articles that explain how those things work and now the different types of optimizations that we can do, all right? So I think it's pretty neat. I think uh, all those things, they are really good examples and showcases of what uh, LiveView can do. I just want, as I am finishing this video, I just want to show a couple more things, right? So a lot of the things that we did, like to remove elements uh, or to react on click, a lot of the things that we did, they were about using JS commands, which again, it's a nice way to declare and compose what we want to happen on the client. But LiveView also has something that is really neat, which is whenever you click an element, LiveView adds a PHX click loading class to that element. And that class is going to stay there while the event is going over the wire. And when the event is acknowledged, the class is automatically removed, which means that for a lot of the optimistic changes that you want to do, adding a CSS rule is pretty much all you need. And if you're using Tailwind, we can use this feature called uh, variants to make the experience really smooth. So let me show you. So when you start a new application with Phoenix, uh, it comes with Tailwind by default, and it uses the add variant plug plugin to add like a click loading variants. So what this means that if we come back to this page and say, look, uh, let's say that when we click on page X click and we are waiting for the event, I want to say that the loading state is text Excel, okay? So I'm going to save this. And now when I click this, what we should see is that the delete uh, button is going to get bigger, right? Yep, and we saw that, right? So this is adding a class is pretty much all we took for us to add some like optimistic experience to our application, right? And again, all this state is tracked and managed by LiveView for us, right? And this is really good because it works with buttons. So if you want to do quick animation on buttons, um, it, for example, if you want to make a spinner appear, right? You can have the spinner here and make it show when there is page X click loading. Uh, it works also with forms and inputs. So whenever you want to show that something is happening over the wire or waiting for something, sometimes all you need is a CSS class, right? And, and you can say, look, a lot of those cases, it's really, smooth and straightforward, but what if you have something complex that you cannot express with JS commands or you cannot express with loading classes and loading states? Well, good news is that LiveView has this feature called PHX hook. And PHX hook basically gives you full control over the DOM element alongside all of LiveView lifecycle callbacks. So that element can react to server updates that element can control when the updates are applied, that element knows when uh, we lose connection to the server, when established back again. So if you wanna have full control, if you wanna build something complex, you can use PageX hook. And just to give you an idea of how far you can push the Phoenix abstractions, right? Because one of the first things that people are going to think is like, oh, am I going to be writing like PageX hook all the time. So just to give you an example of how far you can push this, uh, a couple months ago, we were talking about the Live Beats application. This is an open source app uh, implemented by Chris McCord, the creator of LiveView. And there are a lot of things you can do on this app, right? You can upload songs, 
right? And then you can broadcast those songs to your listeners in real time. So it works kind of a radio thing. But not only that, when you upload the song, there is a machine learning model running in Elixir, transcribing the song in real time. So there are a lot of things happening in this application. And if we open up the JavaScript file for this application, it is 300 lines of code, right? So all the things that is happening in this application to the user experience, right? A lot of it is being driven by the live view foundation, right? And the abstractions that we have. And for the things that we can't do, right? Like, uh, oh, there's an auto player. We have to manage an auto player. You can use hooks to handle exactly that. And to be fair, like, these uh, 300 lines of code is kind of overshooting it a bit because some of the features that is in this code right now, they are actually upstreamed uh, into live view because Chris uses this application as a test bed for some features. So some of those features, especially the ones related to accessibility, they are now actually part of live view and we could even shrink this down uh, a bit further. Well, that's all I wanted to share for today. I wanted to show how easy it is to get the most optimistic updates and optimistic deletes happening with Live View and how important it is to have a strong foundation, right? And, you know, when you think about it, it's kind of like, almost like a paradox, right? Like for a server-side framework to have so many affordances and abstractions on the client, right? But if you... The way we, Chris and I and the LiveView team, the way we approach this problem is that, look, if we want to be a server-side framework, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to solve most of the problems for the developers so they don't have to, right? So they don't have to be resorting to the client all the time. That's why we automatically manage and the inconsistency between client and server state for you. Oh, you want to do navigation? We can do that for you. Straightforward optimistic updates, it's there out of the box, right? And for the cases where you're really pushing live view limits, you can use hooks. Well, uh, that's enough talking for today. I hope you enjoy the video and see you next time.